Hello, uh, it's Hello Interloper, and I'm here to give you another event update and um, also answer some questions because I do have quite a few questions uh, waiting in my inbox. Um, I just want to apologize again for kind of going on hiatus. Uh, as strange as it sounds, and I know this will probably raise a few eyebrows, I was making clay shrimp. Uh, I had an order of a hundred clay shrimp that I was to make for a client, and that took up a lot of time. I kind of spent the past week and a half just working on this, and my hands are aching me, <laughs> as you might imagine. But thankfully those were shipped today, so I have my life back. And not every moment of my free time has to be spent making clay shrimp. Needless to say, I probably don't want to see another shrimp in my lifetime. Um, currently in Rage of Bahamut, the Castle in the Sky event has officially started. Um, and it started on the 14th, and it's going on until the 29th. So this is a rather long event. And I um, thought I'd give some background information about it for people who haven't been on lately or just have some questions. Um, basically, it's kind of similar to um, Tears of the Moon. I don't know if you guys have uh, participated in that event or not, but it's a quest where you just go through and progressively you find some bosses, you fight them together with two people on your friends list and also two people from your order will join in. Um, you can choose not to have friends actually participate in the battle to reduce the amount of attack power you use, but um, the more you hammer away on the boss, the more it gets killed. It's not a one-time thing like normal quest bosses. You either do it or you don't. Um, and as you go through the quest, you get certain cards. Now, with these certain cards you get, um, I'll show you a few of them, you get normal cards in addition to these cards. And these are cards that you can specifically use uh, to feed your fairy. Basically, the fairy is your order's fairy. And everybody who feeds it contributes to growing this fairy. And um, Basically what that means is that the fairy will gain levels and with those levels change appearance and give you certain rewards. Uh, the rewards really aren't anything spectacular, they're mostly cure water, although once it does get to level 50 you get um, two legend card packs for everybody in the order and um, I think 25 is one legend card pack. Now. Um, this could be good, could be bad. Uh, personally, I have the most awful luck from Legend card packs, and the most I've ever gotten from a Legend card pack has been, uh, I don't know, like a Sector or something. So, it's up to you to really choose whether it's worth it. But either way, by giving your fairy these cards, you also raise not only an order ranking, but also an individual ranking. An individual ranking is where, in this order, one event, you can really get some great rewards. Um, but yeah, only certain cards can be given to the fairy, and once you give them, they're completely gone. Um, as you can see here, by the way, I'm using uh, the Rage Bahamut wiki for this information. Uh, you can level the fairy. Uh, normals, as in the, only the normals that you can get from these quests uh, in the event quest. Uh, evolve normals are 60 points, so um, really there's no difference whether or not you evolve it. In fact, it's easier to just give normals because then you don't have to spend the, uh, the coins, gold, or whatever. I actually don't remember off the top of my head. Rupees! Yes, there we go. Y you save the rupees, you don't have to enhance them, evolve them, whatever. Um, high normals, evolved high normals, same exact thing. Um, Rares. Now this is where you can use any rares. You can use any rare for 100 points. Evolved rares are 250, so it is absolutely not worth it to evolve um, your rare because it'll only be 250, whereas if you did four rares, it'd be 400. Um, high rares are 500 points. High rare treasure cards are 100 points. So um, Basically, your best bet is, when you're doing the quest, you want 
to hope that you get slime Elena's because uh, they're worth a hundred points each and you get a lot of them now if you're somebody who's not really too big on these events I would highly recommend um, to use these as feeders and save your slime Elena's to sell after the event for about one HP or two cure waters each on the bazaar but um, that's only if you really don't want to take part in this event and you know that you'll never rank high enough to get a good reward because this is a good reward this is a good event in general for getting feeder cards but on the other hand the rewards are pretty great now let me go to the rewards um, and this is why I say it's very worth it um, now Phantom Thief Lupin uh, is actually a the card that you get um, from completing all the treasure sets like the uh, Tears of the Moon there are treasure sets that you can complete you get the treasure from battling or from going through the quest you get two different colors based on your realm and then you have to fight for the other ones um, so rather than getting a master pop star as you did in Tears of the Moon you get Phantom Thief Lupin it's really not that great a card it's about you know the strength of rares evolved in the high rares or something like that high rares actually let me check for myself here ah they already have the data up so yeah it really does have uh, the strength of a high rare evolved into SR and um, not really that good of one so uh, let me go up to this and start explaining some of the rewards here um, as you can see even if you rank pretty low from 40,000 to 80,000 you do get a legend claim ticket and six cure water which is pretty nice um, but uh, as you get higher, now I am going to admit um, I have decided to risk a lot uh, in this event, and I had about 150 cure waters built up by mainly selling all of my cards for cure water instead of holy powder. And I've used maybe 120, maybe anywhere from 100 to 120 so far, and I'm currently ranked within this range which gets you one Hecate and one Mystic Fairy so in other words you really don't have to pay out your butt <laughs> to get a great reward because um, frankly that's a lot cheaper than what most people spend in Holy Wars <laughs> seeing that uh, top rankers usually spend upwards of 300 Holy Powders and that equals about 600 Cure Waters so this is pretty good so far um, but even if you don't rank super high even if you rank around here you get two high rares three legend claim tickets it's pretty much a nice event now where we kind of go bad here and fall flat is um, the order growth point reward only the top 50 orders get Phantom Thief Lupin, which really isn't worth that much, and a Mystic Fairy. So there are no SR rewards, nothing really worth it. Um, and yeah, there's the Fairy Diary reward. And sometimes when you fill up her heart gauge, which um, doesn't really take a lot of cards to do, I, I think it's about equal to a thousand growth points and as I showed earlier the different levels of cards different rarities equal different amount of points um, but I believe once you have a thousand you get um, a special reward which could be one cure water personal holy powder personal friendship points a thousand to three thousand um, legend card pack claim ticket high rare and up pack claim ticket SR and up pack claim ticket angel queen devil queen but I will tell you right now, I have filled up that bubble so many times, and all I've gotten has been Cure Water Personal, Holy Water Personal, the Friendship Points, and Angel Queen. So don't bet on getting a Devil Queen or anything better, because it takes a lot. It's a very small chance. Um, now, as for the Treasure Completion Rewards... Um, it's a little bit different than Tears of the Moon. This time we get high rares, but unfortunately these are more equal to the bunny rewards of um, the Easter event. Which means that even though they are high rares, they really have the strength of rares. So um, let me see if they do have the evolution stats here. Yeah, 
they really aren't that great. They're a little bit better than rares, evolved into high rares. As you can see, it's got an okay defense. Um, and the other ones, this one's more attack favored. So they're kind of in between, I would say. But um, really not that much worth it. They're selling for very cheap right now on the bazaar. So they might be good to use if you need something to bridge the gap between uh, rares evolved into high rares and high rares evolved into SRs. And then, of course, if you complete it all, you get Fan of the Thief Lupin. Um, before I summarize this, uh, I just want to point out, I've had a lot of people, especially in my order, get very weirded out by the evolution of Slime Elena. Because it's, uh, as you see, it's a very drastic change from a little blob uh, to a blue girl. Um, and I did a little bit of research on this, and apparently this is based off of a slime girl fetish that is on the internet. Um, kind of disturbing, but I guess to each of their own. Uh, see, third evolution, she grows some boobs, which is... <laughs> I find highly hilarious. And then, of course, she's, uh, yeah, very skimpy in this one. <laughs> but, um, as you can see, this is a pretty good card, seeing that it has a very high end attack and defense. So, if you are demons and you want to make a pretty decent, um, deck, you can use these, uh, and it doesn't look like they have skills, so they would just probably be uh, the sides of your deck, the wings, as many people call them. So, um, that's about it for now. Um, I don't really know what the next event is. Uh, seeing that the last one was Holy Wars not too long ago, I do have a feeling that it might be another Holy Wars, especially because this is a very long event. But, um, frankly, I'm hoping that it isn't Holy Wars because, uh, I am out of Holy Powder. <laughs> and really, really, uh, was disappointed last Holy Wars. Well, anyway, um, off to the question and answer section. Um, so I got quite a few questions here, not as many as I had hoped, but good enough to fill up the rest of my time here. Um, Void Void has asked, why is Master Popstar so cheap? Well, um, let me quickly bring up Master Popstar on the wiki, and I will go through this. Um, Master Popstar was given out during the Tears of the Moon event as a reward for getting all of the, uh, treasure from the quest, and, um, it's... An SR, super rare, and evolves into SS rare, but that's kind of a misnomer. Um, it's another one of those cards that, even though they say it's of a certain quality, the stats do not reflect that. So, um, if we go down here, you can see that these aren't really the stats that you would expect from an SR evolved into an SSR. Um, it's pretty decent. Not going to lie for defense, especially because it has um, an ability, personal request, big boost to defense all. And the defense is fairly good. Um, so it's really not a true super rare. And that's why it's worth so little. And also because so many people were able to get their hands on it from the event. So um, Thankfully, if you are man and you need something to kind of bridge the gap between rares evolved into high rares and high rares evolved into S rares, um, this is a pretty good choice for you. And it's very affordable. Now our next question is, I'm farming my own feeders from chapter 2. Could you please explain why it's better to evolve them to high normal first instead of just using them normal unevolved? It takes a huge amount of time, 40 quests, to make a set of 10 feeders. To max out a rare card, it's well over 100. Thanks again. Now, this is a pretty interesting question because 
it does take a lot of questing in order to get feeders. Um, and it's a good question. Why waste your time evolving them into high normals? Well, the reasoning behind that is because as you get um, your card to a higher level, it takes more and more rupees per card to enhance it. Um, so let's say that you are enhancing a high rare or even an S rare. Once you get to about level 40, you are going to be paying in the thousands of rupees to enhance it with just one card. So the logic behind evolving them into high normal first is so that way you minimize that cost. It's a lot better to spend, let's say, 5,000 to enhance with a high normal than with it normal. Because honestly, um, if you multiply that amount by four, you're spending four times as much rupees just to enhance your card. So, in other words, it's just a way how to save rupees. Of course, if you have so many rupees that you have no idea what to do with, you can just straight up evolve with normals. It really doesn't um, make much of a difference if you have millions of rupees. But if you are pretty low on rupees and you're trying to conserve them, the best way to do that is to evolve them because it actually costs less to evolve them in a high normal and enhance with them than it would be to just straight up enhance with normals. Um, however, for let's say rare cars, it might not be that much worth it because it doesn't get that expensive to enhance a rare. Now, meanwhile, if you're doing S rares, it can get very, very expensive. And that's why a lot of people tend to use Angel Queens once they get uh, to really high card ranks. And uh, Chapter 2, yes, is the best um, way to go. Actually, if I...